Um, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to make you aware of, uh, of something here. And if you're a soccer fan or if you're not a soccer fan, I think what, what, uh, what has happened here, we're going to speak to the great George Vesey, legendary sports columnist of the New York Times, author and a, a, a book called Eight World Cups, which is now out in paperback. Uh, but first, I want you to hear what we're going to skip those uh, tweets, folks. We're going to go right to uh, uh, Loretta Lynch, the, uh, the uh, U.S. Attorney General, and watch her. Then we'll go to George Vesey. Now, the 14 defendants charged in the indictment we are unsealing today include high-ranking officials of FIFA, the international organization responsible for regulating and promoting soccer, leaders of regional and other governing bodies under the FIFA umbrella, and sports marketing executives who, according to the indictment, paid millions of dollars in bribes and kickbacks to obtain lucrative media and marketing rights to international soccer tournaments. All right. So uh, the United States Justice Department has gone after FIFA, has gone after the World Soccer uh, and International Soccer Leagues. And uh, joining us now is uh, George Vesey. George, in your book, Eight World Cups, which is now out in paperback, you address uh, some of the very things that Loretta Lynch has brought up here in the indictment against these folks, correct? Oh, it's been sitting here for years, Steve, because as soon as they had that tainted vote for two host countries in the same time, which led to all kinds of politicizing and money being passed around, you knew that this was a time bomb, and it's been sitting there, and finally it got into the hands of a country that was willing to deal with it, which is the United States. Most countries... Uh, they are so ingrained in the way soccer works that they accept it. The United States being sort of an outsider, it got into the hands of people that really want to do something about it. All right, so what, what exactly, was this spurred on, do you believe? Uh, I mean, there are a lot of people, not to diminish the importance of, of what has happened here today, but there are a lot of people who would rather see uh, Loretta Lynch and the Justice Department go after people uh, at the IRS. Uh, Hillary uh, or other people who uh, you know we may believe uh, have done worse things that affect this country in a more adverse way and and might ask what business is it of uh, Loretta Lynch how does how does she play in how does the US Justice Department play into international soccer well we're not very good at international soccer but what we are good at is television networks and multinational corporations as sponsors of television shows and that's one of the reasons that FIFA has a uh, fearful relationship with the United States. They've always wanted American money from television and from corporations, but they didn't want the relative openness, the relative transparency that, you know, I know, and I know everybody's going to laugh, that American businesses have. So it finally got to the point where American businesses were being seen as enabling these people in in Switzerland who were taking money, who were running crooked elections for the host countries in the next two World Cups. And it was American money that was greasing a lot of this uh, largesse on FIFA. And what is what is this mean? And, and was this spurred on? I think this is what I started to ask you before I got sidetracked and asked you the other question. Before. Did, did, was this spurred on by the fact that um, the U.S. you know wanted the World Cup for down the road, I don't. You probably know what what year better than I. And you know, it it it, it they we didn't get it. And in fact, London wanted it. And it goes to Qatar, uh, who many people think you know bribed their way. I mean, for crying out loud, it's 110 degrees uh, on a daily basis in Qatar. Well, there's all of that. There was documented evidence at the time of the vote back around 2009, 10, that the 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 vote was tainted because people were making deals. When you have two votes at the same time, it's just obvious. You know, you study political science when you're a junior in high school, you know that if you put two things together, people will cut deals. You know, it might even happen in Congress, for all I know. But in this case, there was money seen passing, people were caught selling their votes, and the scandal happened at the time. A couple of English muckrakers, even more than the United States, went after it. But it fell in the lap of the United States when Blatter made a big mistake for some reason, I don't know why, he hired an American lawyer named Michael Garcia, who's got a great reputation. I believe he's a Giuliani guy. He's worked in, in New York as a prosecutor. They hired him to investigate, quote, investigate. Garcia did his job, as far as we can tell, scrupulously. He came up with a huge report, and Blatter promptly disregarded it. 
Garcia, whose name had been out there, who'd been doing, he wouldn't talk to the press. He was very careful about what he did. He resigned from any involvement with FIFA when that happened. And I don't know. I don't know that he's gone public. I have no idea of the machinations behind because I haven't been covering it. But I do know that once Garcia's name was was used there, uh, Loretta Lynch worked with him in New York, and so did James Comey, the head of the FBI. And I'm not saying there's a cabal. All I'm saying is the people that I regard as honest, legitimate American uh, prosecutors, lawyers, uh, all know the same thing. That's where this is coming from. Yeah, no, yeah. very interesting. And you know, it's funny. I went to bed last night having read a story um, about uh, this um, this uh, Palestinian effort to have Israel kicked out of uh, out of have FIFA kick Israel out of soccer. Uh, and then I woke up to this story, and I was I said, "Man, is there some connection?" Of course, there wasn't. And I don't mean to throw your curve, but this guy Jabril Rajab. Uh, who Israelis say is a terrorist, if not a te- and, and a terrorist sympathizer, and they list a whole bunch of statements he's made in the Jerusalem Post, um, talking about raiding, uh, you know, kibbutzes and other things, and and slaughtering people and blah blah blah. Um, but, you know, this is people have to understand that soccer soccer internationally is as politicized as any organization uh, that you could think of, right? Uh, I would certainly say that's true. To be fair to FIFA. They have done a number of idealistic things. They are always expressing sympathy with Palestinian and other causes, but strong backing for Israel as as a nation for participating. Um, Israel participates in a European tournament rather than a Middle Eastern tournament for that reason, fair enough. But FIFA has, if FIFA put the World Cup in South Africa in 2010, has done a number of things that you could say are, quote, idealistic. And if you want to say that they're spreading the name, spreading the brand, that's fine too. But FIFA is is less culpable on that level than it is on sheer greed, on people from all over the world, from countries where bribing is, is almost mandatory to get ahead. The Caribbean, Africa, Asia, right. Uh, right. Europe and the United States and, and uh, England, Canada, countries like that have blown the whistle on it, but it's only now coming into the public. All right, George, and everybody should read Eight World Cups, now available out there, Amazon and all over, bookstores in paperback uh, by the great George Vesey. Thank you, sir. Hey, anytime, Steve. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch, is next. The latest on the Clinton Foundation and Hillary's emails. Don't go away.